Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. It's a bit holder for the Long Mill CNC MK2. Okay, so I made this bench before I got the Long Mill set up. Minus the enclosure, which I finished recently. And I added the drawer and the shelf underneath to the right. So after I did that, I, uh, I decided I needed a place to store all my bits. Uh, I was storing them in a, in a box underneath there, but that wasn't really working out. So I didn't say, well, hey, I got a CNC machine. Let's, let's make a proper bit holder. So I got a scrap piece of MDF that I had laying around. And I made this. So it's got square holes for my square bit holders that come that way. And the ones that come in just a plain bag, I, I made drilled some holes that uh, they fit in. And I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so we're going to open up a Spire or Vectric uh, Desktop or Pro. Either one will work. So we're going to create a new file. In this case, uh, I already got the dimension set up here that I want, but you're going to set whatever dimensions your board is. Mine happens to be 12 inches wide by 4.5 inches high, and the thickness is uh, 0.75 inches. And I'm going to zero from the machine bed, and I'm going to put the XY datum position on the bottom left. Okay, so we're going to start off using uh, the draw rectangle tool. And we're just going to make a square. And we will set the dimensions. Now the dimensions of the particular bit holder case that I have is 0.5 inches. So I'm going to set it at 0.51 just to give it a little leeway to fit in and out comfortably. And I'll hit apply. And we're just going to move that down a little bit. We'll close this out. Move it down and over. Just give it some space. Okay. So now we're going to go down to array copy. And we're going to set, for my particular setup, I set it at five rows and seven columns and we'll set this at 0.3 for the gap and we'll hit copy and that's what that gives us hit close and we're just gonna bring that down And we'll just center that up and down. Okay, so we got that. Close that out. Okay, so for mine, I just used uh, the first three rolls down or over. And I will cut this out. And then I added some circular pockets with a dimension of point two six hit apply and then we'll go down while well, it's still selected to the array copy and we will make that now three and let's say five all right, so bring it down, line it up where you want to put it. That looks about good. All right, so that gives you quite a few spots, and you still got some open here if you want to add some in the future. So we'll close that out. And I'm going to select all the squares, hit shift on the keyboard. That gives me all the squares. We'll go over to the tool path. Get that little pin down to keep that up there. 
Then we're going to go to the pocket toolpath. And we're going to set the end mill at a quarter inch. I originally set it at one eighth, but that was a little too small. It did, it did the job, but uh, took a little longer than what was necessary. We're going to calculate that. And we'll preview it. And there you go. They fit nice in there. Okay, so we're going to go back to 2D. And we will select the circles now. And go back here. Go to pocket again. Uh, cut depth. Oh, I set the cut depth at 0.6. Now this one we're going to make a little bit smaller end mill. I'm going to remove that one. Select a new one. We're going to go one eighth for that one. All right. So the cut depth of the pocket I set to 0.6. That leaves a little bit of space in the bottom. And we'll calculate reset tool bath preview all. And there you go. Okay, so we're going to close that out. And we will go to save. Well, first we can see how long this project's going to take. Not saying it's going to, for the pocket one of the squares, it's going to take 15 minutes. And pocket two, 10 minutes. That's assuming you have a scale factor of one. Now you can go in, the default when you first start up the program is two. So that'll double the time for some reason. But uh, the actual time is much shorter usually. So if you want to see the actual time or close to it, you just change the scale factor to one and it'll remember that for future projects. Okay, so we're going to save that out. You just save your toolpath wherever you want to save it. Name it whatever you want to name it. And you do that same for both. And you're ready to go to the machine.